Hey guys, Sterling here, and as always, we are jumping right into it. Today, we are discussing what if the captains in the Thousand Year Blood War fought different Stern Ritter, meaning what would happen if during the first and second invasions, the captains encountered different Stern Ritter than the ones they ran into. For example, what if instead of Shinji battling Bambietta, he battled Mask instead? And what if instead of fighting Mask to Masculine, Rose and Kensei fought Bambi? This will be an ongoing series on the channel where we look at different hypothetical battles between Captains and Stern Ritter. But today we are going over three different what if battles, the ones I just mentioned. And as a bonus battle, and since Bambietta will have her hands full with Rose and Kensei, we are going to explore a hypothetical Yuha versus Kamamura battle. I am beyond excited to get started with this one. As always, I encourage you to slash that like button, slash the subscribe button for more awesome Bleach What Ifs. And as always, if you have an idea for a future What If, drop it in the comments below, guys. I'm always reading the comments. I love interacting with you guys. And guys, with all that said, without further ado, let's get right into these battles. All right, guys, as always, let me paint you a picture. The second invasion is well underway. The once feudal era aesthetic of the Serete has been completely replaced by colossal Gothic cathedrals covered in a thin blue ice. Although things have looked bleak, the Gote 13 has just caught its first break with Kisuke's massive discovery. Every Bonkai wielding Shinigami has just received a Shin and Yako to combat the Quincy's Bonkai stealing medallion. Squad Captain Ukatake and Squad Captain Zaraki's whereabouts are unknown. So if you can't tell, we're using both anime and manga continuity here. And now that the battlefield is somewhat set, I want to talk just real quick about some pre-battle dialogue and setup. Now, the only thing that's really going to need tweaking for this to work is the captains that are currently on the battlefield need to head different directions. So in this case, we have Shinji and Momo now traveling in the direction of Hisagi, Ikaku, and Yamachika. And we have Rose and Kensei racing in the direction of all the commotion Bambietta is creating. Now, I want to focus on Shinji first. In a Shinji-centric what-if... I think in character, we would be treated to some incredible dialogue, even pre-fight. So I want to kind of stop and talk about that for a second. Now the visor, now this is kind of headcanon, I've always envisioned that they are very well cultured when it comes to the world of the living. And hear me out, these guys, all the visor, especially Shinji, they're old. I mean, Shinji's just as old as Kisuke. Now anyways, my point being is when they were banished, they were banished to the world of the living, and they lived there for hundreds of years because they were banished a long time. So I imagine they got to witness tons of world history. And like you, you can tell in story that the Visard are very well cultured just by the way they dress. I mean, look, Lisa has like, you know, a... Uh, uh, addiction anyways like I'm just saying in the way she dresses they all have their own little aesthetic that pertains to kind of real world fashion at least in some like period of time anyways what I'm getting at is I imagine like the thoughts and dialogue that Shinji's probably thinking about in his head are probably pretty incredible so you've got this you've got the um, crazy Quincy architect that's like European gothic style and like can you just imagine Shinji kind of thinking to himself like man this looks a lot like Munich German Germany right after that massive war that the humans fought so like World War II anyways I just I, I find it incredible like how these characters may think you know like because I mean there's they're people too like when we're really like if we're talking about a what if story so we can call them people so like Shinji's gonna have his own thoughts and like Anyways, I find it extremely interesting. I bet the Gothic-style European buildings remind him of something he's seen in the real world. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, let's get back to the what-if. 
So we have a Shinji that is racing towards Mask. And like I said, he will more than likely be accompanied by Momo. Who, oh, wrong, wrong picture of Momo there. Anyways, Momo is an extremely proficient keto user. So she may just end up being some help to Shinji in his battle against Mask. I imagine Shinji would get there right in the nick of time, right before Mask is getting ready to stomp out his sage. And Shinji would literally do something badass, like catch Mask's foot in the loop of Sakinata. At least that's how I imagine it. And then, you know, like throw him off and you get some extremely witty dialogue from Shinji, I'm sure. And anyways, the battle would start right then and there. I'm sure Shinji would start off by saying something like along the lines of, what's with the luchador mask like and that also goes into like the Vizard being very well cultured is like Shinji's gonna know what that is I'm sure he's seen it in my estimation Shinji's a pretty smart fighter for the most part I know the Vizard catch a lot of heat for not being that smart in battle but anyways my point being is I think Shinji would go straight into this battle with his Shikai activated now, in my opinion, this is where this what if, what if battle gets extremely fun. Cue the epic jazz music as Shinji Shikai begins to affect Mask. Mask's whole world begins to spin. Up is down. Down is up. Left is right. Right is left. Mask is completely disoriented at this point. And so at this point, Shinji would attack Mask more or less thinking he killed him and then he would revive and his soggy would reveal that james is the true enemy so R shinji would know that and he would have to go back to combating mask and this is where you ask the question does shinji just go rambling on about his abilities kind of like he did against aizen if he does do this because we do have to explore every aspect of the what if then mask is more than likely gonna rip his nose off and Shinji's gonna suffer the same fate as Rose did telling too much information allowing Mask to do something crazy to counteract said ability and then launching a star beam ending both Shinigami but for the sake of this what if we're gonna say Shinji actually goes at Mask intelligently one side note do you think that the effects of Sakenada would stay with Mask the entire fight? Or do you think that each time that Mask revives, then he, then Shinji would then have to um, use his Shikai ability on Mask again? How do you guys think that would work? I'm going with the latter, that Mask would then have to be put back under the effects of the Shikai. Anyways, depending on how that works would depend on how, if Shinji ultimately did suffer a rose fate from running his mouth too much. Anyways, tell me in the comments below, how do you think that works? But like I said, for the sake of this, what if we're going to say that Shinji fights smart and he doesn't ramble on about his abilities. And so we move forward with this battle under the notion that Shinji kept quiet about his Shikai abilities. And so Mask revives and Shinji's able to put Mask under the spell of Sake Nada once again. At this point, Mask would begin to panic. And what I think he would do, all confused and whatnot, I think he would start shooting star beam after star beam after star beam in a complete circle. Kind of similar to how Bambietta combated um, Shinji Shikai, but it wouldn't be nearly as effective. You see, the reason why Shinji was defeated by Bambietta, because Bambietta's bombs could not be dodged. She was shooting Reishi into an object, and whatever her Reishi went into, that said object became a bomb. So she literally turned Shinji's chest cavity into a bomb. He could not dodge an attack like that. But a star beam from Mask, I could totally see Shinji flash stepping around the battlefield, dodging these attacks, trying to fatally wound a confused Mask. And at this point it would be a race could momo and him do it could momo take down james while shinji's combating mass to masculine and could they take both of them out simultaneously and destroy the stern ritter combo 
I guess I shouldn't say Stern Raider combo, but James the Stern Raider and Master Masculine. Could Shinji and Momo take them out before Master Masculine could take out either Momo or Shinji? I think it'd be incredibly fun to see, and I think the combo of those two would force Mask to use his full standing, because I think you would have a Momo playing support in the background, activating all sorts of keto shields to help shield Shinji from the Star Blasts. And at this point, so deep into a fight, battling for his life, you may just see Shinji finally utilize his hollow mask in the Soul Society. It would be incredible to see, and this is a what if, so it wouldn't be a Shinji what if, if I didn't at least talk about him utilizing his hollow mask. I think it would augment his speed. I think it would really help him to be able to bounce around the Serete and dodge those flash beams. But ultimately, I think Mask is an incredibly strong Stern Ritter, and Shinji's going to have to be on top of his game. He's going to have to be strategizing. He's really going to have to go all out in order to beat Mask. Who knows? After utilizing his hollow mask, Shinji may have the speed to be able to flash step over to James, completely annihilate him, and then somehow, like I said, with Momo's support and some keto shields, get in close enough to be able to lay a fatal wound on mask. I mean, it would be... 10 out of 10, the hardest fight that Shinji's ever been in, other than Aizen. You have to remember that at least in the anime, Mask was throwing around an incredibly strong Soul Palace trained Renji with a fully revealed unlocked Bankai. And this version of Renji is I mean, he's stronger than a lot of the captains. Like it or not, this Renji is incredibly strong and Mask is able to throw him around. So like I said, Shinji's going to have to be in tip, tip top shape, be strategizing. Be do he's going to have to do everything he can to defeat Mask in this battle. Now, I want to address one more thing about Shinji and probably the elephant in the room. You guys are probably all asking, Sterling, what if Shinji uses his Bankai against Mask? And guys, there's only two ways that Shinji would ever activate his Bankai. One would be his Momo. He'd have to tell Momo, hey, get out of here as fast as you can. Leave this area because we do know according to the anime, that there is a range to Shinji's Bankai. We don't know how big that range is, but we do know there's a range. So he would tell Momo, get out of here as far as you can so my Bankai doesn't affect you. Either that or Momo would have to die in battle. Those are the only two ways that Shinji would actually activate his Bankai. And then you have to ask yourself, how would that affect the dynamic between James and and Master Masculine. So would it affect the superstar? If Shinji activates his Bankai and Mask and James begin to hate each other, would that then negate the superstar ability? Would James or would Mask just not revive because James doesn't see him as a superstar anymore? He sees him as a villain. We have no clue how the Bankai would actually affect James or Mask. It's all up in the air. Now, something interesting to think about is if Shinji activate his bon activated his Bankai while there was multiple Jameses, like when those like 100, 200 Jameses were all in a group yelling superstar, like if Shinji activated his Bankai then, would then all those Jameses begin to devour each other, thus giving Shinji the time to go and destroy Mask? It's all up in the air. I want to know down in the comments below, how do you think Shinji's Bankai would affect those two? I love talking Shinji, but we do have to move on because we do have two more what-if battles. But like I said, it is very interesting to think that if the friend or foe ability would affect James and Mask in the same way that it affected the soul dad. Anyways, I digress. Let's move on to the battle between Kensei and Rose versus Bambietta. 
So somewhere on the other side of the battlefield, we have a Kensei and a Rose racing towards Bambietta and all the commotion she's creating with her explosion ability. And guys, I just want to start off by saying right away that Bambietta is an extremely strong combatant with a hacks ability. If Rose and Kensei come in here, like not on top of their game and want to underestimate Bambi because of how she looks, they're going to get obliterated right there on the spot. But as always, for the sake of our what ifs, we're going to just say that Kensei and Rose don't have all their heavy dialogue that they normally have before fighting an opponent. We're going to say that they've witnessed her ability when they were traveling up to try to save everyone. And so they're, they are, are already well aware, like, man, we cannot get hit by that. They don't know exactly what's happening, but they know that her ability is incredible. The harsh truth about this particular battle is if these two Shinigami, like I said, aren't on top of their game and go into this battle with their Bonkais unleashed right off the bat, they're gonna get obliterated. This is by far the strongest combatant that either one of these Shinigami have ever faced in their hundreds of years of existence. And I'm sorry to any Kensei fans, but I'm having a hard time seeing how he could combat Bambietta's explosion ability. It's just a hard counter for something like Kensei's ability. His Bonkai allows him to hit extremely hard and carry that motion through you a hundred times a hundred times fold. But the thing about that is, is I don't think he could ever get close to Bambietta to do any damage. Now, that being said, if Kente can get lucky and even just land one punch on Bambietta, she is done for. But like I said, I don't think our boy Kente is going to even make it to Bambietta. Sadly, he's going to be the first tragedy in this what-if battle because he has no way to combat Bambietta. Now, it also may not be that one-sided because we could allow Kensei and Rose access to their hollow masks, just like we gave Shinji in his what-if battle. And why not? It is a what-if battle. So say Kensei and Rose activate their hollow masks and it augments their speed and strength. The only thing it's really going to do is allow them to dodge Bambietta's explode. But unfortunately, probably not for very long, because Bambi and her Volsh standing, the way she unleashes those Reishi bombs, they're almost unguardable. The only reason Kamamura was able to combat those attacks is because he was intangible and immortal at the time. Kensei and Rose, sadly, aren't going to be immortal. It's going to be extremely hard for both Shinigami to survive the explode ability. Now, I do think that Rose is going to have a far better chance than Kensei does in this battle. Ultimately, I see Kensei going down just as quickly as our boy Shinji went down when he fought Bambietta. Rose stands more of a chance because of his incredibly hacks Bonkai. So we're going to go into how that exchange would take place. Now, once again, in character, if Rose wastes any time at all activating his Bonkai and going three, going through all three performances and absolutely destroying Bambietta, then he is going to be destroyed right there on the spot. If he tries to do his music conductor thing, like, let me play you this melody, boom, he's getting exploded. If he goes, welcome to my show, take a s boom, he's getting exploded. That's, I mean, Bambietta's ability is just extremely fearsome, but if he activates his Bonkai, gets straight into it, Boom, the fire. Boom, then the water. Then whatever the final act, which I believed would have probably killed Mask if he wouldn't have blown out his eardrums, if he does that immediately to Bambietta, then I could see how maybe he could take her out. But it's still so incredibly out of character for Rose that I think he too, and I hate to say it, would probably suffer the same fate as Kensei getting his chest cavity blown up, 
or getting he maybe even his entire body blown apart. Anyways, he cannot waste any time. Rose, if he's smart, goes right into it. Like I said, activates his Bonkai and puts on the greatest, fastest show he's ever put on. Then maybe he can beat Bambietta. Although I do think the dialogue in character between these characters in the very beginning would be something very interesting to watch. You know, she would probably look at Kensei and want to kill him more because of, like, what she did to do to the bedroom. Anyways, and, like, Rose, he's probably going to be jibber-jabbering. I mean, I'm a fan of both these holified Shinigami that should be extremely strong. But in this case, I just think Bambietta is going to be too much for Rose and Kensei. And ultimately, they both lose this battle, whether they're together or not. Now, the good thing about Rose and Kensei being together, two captains, Kamamura is for sure just going to continue on. Kensei and Rose are going to be like, we got this. You know, Kamamura is going to be like two captains, like y'all ought to be able to handle her anyways. So he is going to move on and go straight towards a hypothetical battle with Yuha. So yes, we are moving into our third bonus hypothetical battle where we have a Kamamura desperately trudging towards Yuha to do battle with him and finally get the revenge for Yamamoto that he so desperately wants. And guys, this battle is a lot of fun because obviously Sajin's Bonkai is absolutely massive. And at this point, he's pretty much intangible. But guys, at this point, we can't say that he's completely immortal. Okay, yes, he was dot or he was able to tank Bambietta's bombs and regenerate from that. But like, I mean, if he was like to get hit with like a Hado 90 or something like that in that form, like that some an attack that obliterates existence like we can't be for sure that he would tank something like that so keep that in mind going into this battle now yes i do think yuha would be extremely intrigued and i do think he would respond Sajin as far as his combat ability goes at least while he's in this human form because being somewhat immortal is still very formidable I mean yeah Yuha hates soul reapers but I think he would at least do battle with Sajin instead of like commanding Uryu or like Hashwalt to handle him I do think Yuha himself just like how Yuha handled TR Hollybell in Waco Mundo I do think he would give Sajin the respect of a battle. I keep using the word intangible. I don't mean intangible. What I mean is Sajin's incredibly durable at this point. Semi-immortal. Like I said, we cannot be 100% sure, but we do know, know that Kamamura's durability is off the charts. And now I've heard a lot of people say that they don't believe there's a lot of substance between this battle this hypothetical battle between yuha and kamamura and i think they are completely wrong there would be tons of emotion in this battle i think kamamura would be spouting quite a bit of like hey yuha i'm gonna destroy you because you destroyed yamamoto i mean that was terrible dialogue but you know what i mean and i think yuha would get the point that like kamamura was extremely loyal to yamamoto and is laying down his life right now to get revenge, and I think Yuha would probably start mocking Kamamura at this point, and he would be flying around. Um, we this battle would be awesome to see. We'd see a Yuha combating Sajin's giant Bonkai, probably toy with it, because when it comes to the gap in power, Yuha is just so much more stronger than Kamamura. I mean, I think Kamamura would give it his best effort, and like I said, it would be an, an amazing battle to read or watch. I think it'd be beautiful to see Kamamura's Bonkai swiping at Yuha, but ultimately to no avail, because I think Yuha is just that much stronger. I even think Yuha would go as far as using Yamamoto's stolen Bonkai to combat Sajin, almost to just throw it in his face and Yamamoto's to kind of spit on Yamamoto's grave to destroy one of Yamamoto's most loyal um, soldiers as far with Yamamoto's Bonkai. I think that would be extremely emotional. I think this exchange would be extremely, extremely charged it would be so much fun if this would have actually went down 
as a longtime Bleach fan, I think it would be quite the treat to see Yuha, the Quincy King, utilize Yamamoto, the ex-head captain's Bonkai. I think it would be absolutely beautiful. I'd love to see him access all four directions, north, east, south, and west. And the fact that he would be using this Bonkai on Kamamura would be just that much more satisfying. R.I.P. Kamamura. And another thing with Kamamura and this for human form of his is it has such a huge drawback with the time. I mean, let's be real, guys. Kamamura maybe had like three hours in this human form. He went and put on that armor and then made his way through Serete. He probably should have been moving just a little bit faster, utilizing that human form a little more. Anyways, I digress. I still think it would have been awesome if he would have ultimately made it to Yuha. I just don't think he would have the power to actually get the revenge that he was wanting. And there you guys have it. That was pretty much our first episode of What If the Captains Fought Different Sternritter in the Thousand Year Blood War. This was an incredibly fun video to do, guys. This actually came as a recommendation from one of you guys in the comments. I am very interactive in the comments, so if you have an idea for a what if, and it makes sense, guys, I will make it, and then we will discuss it, because ultimately, that is why I make these videos. I love discussing Bleach with fellow Bleach fans, and like I said, I'm just trying to create a nice community where we can all kind of hang out and discuss our favorite show. I really hope you guys enjoyed this What If. Right now, as far as the editing and the imaging goes, it's all pretty low scale, but my goal for these What Ifs, if they can start getting traction and I can start getting um, a little, well, any funding at all. Right now, these are an absolute labor of love. I make them for free because I love Bleach. And like I said, I love discussing it with you guys. But if we can get some traction and actually get some funding for this channel, then we could take these Bleach What Ifs and actually animate them ourselves and give you guys an amazing animated product of these hypothetical What Ifs because we're never going to actually see them in the series. But if I, like I said, if I had a little bit more funding I could actually make them and I would love to do something like that anyways that's just a side note but that's why I'm always screaming at you guys to slash that like button share these videos slash the subscribe button because I would love to have you in this ever-growing bleach community that I'm building guys like I said we would absolutely love to have you Anyways, guys, what did you think of these what-if battles? Did I miss anything? Help me fill in the gaps if I did. Do you guys believe that Shinji, Shinji's a cultured man, kind of like what I was referring to in the beginning of this video? I'd love to discuss that as well, guys. Like I said, I love discussing this series with you guys. I love making these what-ifs, and I can... And I plan on continuing to make these what ifs. Down the pipeline, we have a great video coming. What if Ichigo never lost his powers while fighting Aizen? And then after that, we have the ultimate what if of the Espada versus the Stern Raider. It's going to be a lot of fun. So like I said, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the future what ifs. They're growing every day. And I hope you guys continue to enjoy them. Until the next video, this is Sterling signing out.